Hey, it's Lo, and you are tuned in to Wrestling Wind Down. I hope you and your families are staying safe and healthy out there. On this week's episode, my guest is Paula Freo. She is a huge wrestling fan based out of the East Coast. We'll be having an open discussion about Paula's decision to go to wrestling shows during the pandemic, as well as what she's seen companies do and not do during the pandemic to protect their fans. So grab your glass of wine. We're going in for the three count. Before we get into the open discussion with Paula, I think it's very important as the host of this show to lay down the foundation for you all. There are wrestling shows going on right now, and we do have the opportunity to go to these shows or stay home. It 100% is a personal choice, and I think either way, whether you're staying at home or you're going out to these shows, we need to be following the mandates that have been set forth by our government. We should be wearing our masks. We should be washing our hands and we should be staying six feet away from others. As Paula will mention in this episode, there have been wrestling companies that have really followed these rules for their fans while attending these shows. On the other hand, there have been some companies that have been very lax about these requirements and that's disappointing to hear. To conclude, I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you are following these mandates. You are wearing your face mask, you are washing your hands, and you are staying six feet away from others. Not only do these precautions protect you, they protect your loved ones, they protect complete strangers. This pandemic is still going on. There might be people outside, there might be people gathering, but it's still going on. It's still serious, and I hope everyone out there, whether you're staying at home or you're attending wrestling shows, are staying safe and thinking about others. As I mentioned in my intro, my guest today is Paula. Paula, I hope you're ready to talk some wrestling and sip some wine. Hello, how are you, Lo? How's everything? Good, I'm so glad to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Honestly, if it wasn't if it wasn't for the best friends, I kind of wouldn't be here with you today. So shout out to those girls right there. <laughs> so how did you get into professional wrestling? To be quite honest with you, at a young age, because most of my family are like boys, All my cousins were guys, most of them. So it's safe to say I grew up as a tomboy because of that. And since they watched it, I grew up watching it. And since then, I really can't let it go at all. And it's like, it's just something even more when you get into like, from WWE to the independent brand, it's just something now you can't like, let go of. Did you start out watching WWE or did you start with independence? I think a lot of People that watch wrestling, they usually start with like WWE or they might have seen like TNA Impact when it first started, but where did you begin? Mm -hmm. I actually started solely on just WWE, Mm -hmm. but like as I met some friends and just got to know more about what's out there, you get to know more about like Impact, ROH, New Japan, and all of those different brands that you can gain all this knowledge from and see all these different types of people and talent around that you kind of just, okay, there's more to wrestling than just what Vince McMahon has. The main part of what I want to get into this podcast about is going to a show during a pandemic. And I think a lot of people, that they have two sides to this. There's one side of it where people are like, you know, do your thing. If you want to go to a wrestling show, as long as you're safe, do it. And then a lot of people are very against it. They're saying, well, you know, there's a lot of stay-at-home orders all over the U.S., we should abide by those. We shouldn't be going out into crowds, et cetera. So mm-hmm. you actually went to a wrestling show. What month did you go? I went in um, in June, actually. The uh, first GCW show slash big independent show back from the lockdown and everything that's going mm-hmm. on. So basically last month, and it was in Indiana. So I flew out, which was definitely like something that people on Twitter were definitely not fans of when they saw that. I was like, oh, I think I'm going to go to Indiana. And I was like, oof, got backlash on that. And I understand like everybody's standpoint and everything. And, you know, with everything that's going on, especially in New York, where the governor is just very strict on stuff and we just fully reopened the state in general, like, I understand, but I kind of just, like, I got cabin fever, if I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I just couldn't stay home, and it's just, like, I felt like something was missing, and that something just happened to be wrestling. Again, just planning it also with 
two of my closest friends that we actually ended up meeting in Indiana. It was just a really good experience in general, although there were some bad experiences because of the the independent brand IWA Mid-South in Indiana. They did not take the precautions that GCW took. So it's just, it's like a hit or miss. It's still a learning curve for sure for other companies to take. But I think with all the events that I've attended so far for GCW in general, they've been very precautious about social distancing, wearing your mask, hand sanitizing stations, or just anything like that. Mm -hmm. And they use that to the advantage to just make sure that everybody's safe. And Brett being the guy who is GCW, basically, um, he's very just caring in the sense because as soon as we got to uh our seats he was like if you guys feel uncomfortable please like you can move your seats back whatever you feel more comfortable with doing just so that you can get the room in the safe distance that you feel better at and you know anytime that the action spilled outside of the ring he definitely just like had Jay rose announcing on the mic like six feet six feet no gathering and he was just making sure that everybody um took their space <laughs> When you first started planning your trip, were you nervous or anything? Like, I know you mentioned, you know, the backlash that you saw, but did you ever second guess going with the backlash and seeing, you know, how other companies were taking proper precautions? Did it make you nervous or did it make you second guess going or were you confident in the decision? Honestly, I have to be, I have to say that I definitely was like kind of on the fence with that. Mm -hmm especially just because it's like I'm flying and that kind of one of the more higher risk things that you could do during the pandemic right. is to fly out of somewhere. But I am I think I'm just really grateful that we had gotten to Indiana right before all these numbers took a spike in Indiana, actually, because I, can, I was reading somewhere that um, if you do to Indiana, you do have to self-quarantine for 14 days. Mm -hmm. um, because of how like you can't travel to that state or if you do travel to that state it's a risk but thankfully that happened right before but absolutely just like second guessing everything and like going to an Airbnb and just like being self even more self-aware of like what's going on you're just like lifestyling everything and out spraying alcohol on stuff to kind of just be more cautious and the steps that you're taking in an Airbnb. You mentioned as well the um, precautions that GCW has taken, and mm -hmm. I think about how, you know, WWE is talking a lot about bringing crowds back eventually. I saw earlier mm -hmm. this week that SummerSlam is canceled, and I think Survivor Series is canceled, which is in November. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a couple yeah. months from now, but they're still on track thinking that WrestleMania is going to go in Los Angeles next year. If that were to happen, what precautions do you think that they should put in place now that you've seen a smaller entity such as GCW put these actions intact? How do you think a company at the volume of WWE would do? Uh, to be quite honest, I feel like with WWE, with how they've been handling just COVID in general, it's been hard to say like or predict how that happened for them just because they haven't even had the talent tested like mm -hmm. these men and women have been in that performance center constantly near each other specifically especially during these films of raw smackdown nxt and just all that stuff right by each other they're not like really six feet apart they right. they weren't implemented to wear a mask like compare that to AEW example everybody was seen wearing a mask as soon as everything was there and again their schedules are just a little bit different but still at the same time with AEW they took a little bit more precaution than something like WWE but with that being said like the numbers in Los Angeles are incredibly enormous like right for them to be confident, yeah, for them to be confident in the, the way that they're taking care of the talent and the people that they work with in a performance center, I, I can't say that they're going to take those same precautions with a crowd, you know? I think, too, it's interesting that, I don't know if you saw a couple weeks ago, but they were talking about having live events as soon as September. Now it's like, oh, never mind, we're going to cancel Survivor Series in November, and I think everything's just been really up in the air and they're mm -hmm. trying to figure out 
what to do with everything because obviously a lot of fans they want to be back at these shows and a lot of people think that it's possible but when I think about it it's not possible to me like you Mm -hmm. said there's a lot of stuff that they've done wrong in terms of testing their talent having the performance center filled with the developmental talent who had no masks on I remember the street profits one week going through the crowd and then the next day people had COVID and it's just been so Mm -hmm. unsafe so For me, I just worry about you bring all these fans together from all over the place, different countries, different cities, what have you, and you really don't know. It's really unsafe. You can't test people at the door, especially if it's, you know, 80,000 people in an arena. You can't test everyone at the door or check temperatures. There's just no way. So speaking of the, you know, temperature taking, did they do that at GCW? How did they have Um, everyone enter? So they... So they did do that. They did do temperature testing and just making sure that you're okay. Um, And if you didn't have a mask, as soon as you got like a ticket checked or anything, they definitely had somebody there to give you a mask and gloves as well and hand sanitizer. So it's just like that versus how IWA Mid-South, again, I'm bringing it up, took care of it. Like they took your temperature at the door and they let you go in. But at the same time, nobody was social distancing Everybody was sitting inside together. I, me and my friends literally sat outside where the door was open to watch Mm -hmm. the rest of the show because we didn't feel comfortable sitting so close to all these people. We sat outside for the whole show to watch what was going on because, again, the promoter just didn't implement what they had. They had a whole box of masks and they didn't even just like hand it out to the people. And I guess it's just like a different reaction. And I think. It's also the fan base Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like people really do respect what Brett is allowing us to do during these times, especially. So it's just, it's insane. You actually are going to another show for GCW this weekend, their homecoming show. How are you feeling about that? You're already out there ready to go. Have you had any nervousness now that you've seen how they do conduct their shows? Have you been nervous to go to this one? Or are you very happy and confident and ready to go? I, I'm, I feel pretty confident, to be quite honest with you, just because, again, like everybody that I've surrounded myself in the past um, couple GCW shows that have happened already, we've all gotten tested. We've all made sure that we were all negative before we even came out to GCW Homecoming as soon as it um, got announced, actually. And my results came out negative. And I still did that after Indiana because mm-hmm. I still wanted to make sure, like, I took the extra week, two weeks off of work to make sure that I didn't feel any symptoms or anything like that. It's like, again, when you're surrounding yourself with people that you know that also took the extra steps to be around you and everybody else, you kind of feel more and Mm -hmm. more comfortable going into that environment especially if it's like an entrance that like Nick Gage has where you're like basically a mosh pit no social distancing but you feel more safe knowing that um everybody around has taken that little extra step to kind of just make sure that the weekend is fun we're all safe we all have our mask we all have like an extra bottle of hand sanitizer or alcohol with us to kind of just make sure or gloves to make sure that we're not like spreading anything but I'm really confident about this weekend what match are you looking forward to the most at the two nights oh man so since there's two nights there's three shows for day one I'm very much looking forward to seeing ACH versus Trey Lamar just because again with uh everything that happened with ACH it's been a while since we've all seen him wrestle and I'm really excited to see what he does with somebody like Trey Lamar, who I've seen wrestle, and he wrestled against Lee Moriarty um, in Indiana, and they got a please come back chant. So mm-hmm. if that doesn't speak volumes of what you can expect from a match with someone like ACH and Trey Lamar, that's definitely a match I'm looking forward to. For tomorrow night, I'm definitely looking forward to... It's RSP versus Warhorse at Beyond. Um, and then for GCW, I think it's going to be Lee Moriarty versus Tony Deppin for me. Do you plan on attending any other shows in the next couple months? Has there been any announced recently that you've gravitated towards that you would like yes. to go to? Absolutely. So there is actually another um, independent brand coming in Jersey. Uh, it's called Violence and Suffering. It's VXS. 
Um, they had actually announced Nick Gage versus JTG. And I, as soon as I saw that, that match announcement, I was like, okay, so we're purchasing tickets, guys. We're all going. <laughs> There's... There's no doubt about it. And I think the one thing that people are forgetting, like since it's outdoors, there are some brands that run indoors still. I don't ever want to go to an indoor show during yeah. this because mm -hmm. with it being outdoors, there's so much, there's just a little bit more you can do. There's more allowance for the social distancing and everything that you can be aware of really. Thank you, Paula, for joining me today on Wrestling Wind Down. Where can the people find you on social media? You will actually find me a lot more on the Verfront social media because <laughs> I'm tagged there on, like, their Instagram, their Twitter. But you can find me on Twitter at Paula Marie and same thing on Instagram at Paula Marie. So that's where you'll find me. Thank you so much for having me, though. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. You can find all of our other episodes available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and wherever else you listen to your podcast. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST. Our new website is also coming soon. Let us know what you thought about the episode. What was your favorite part? We upload episodes with brand new co-hosts every week. Until next time, enjoy your wine, and of course, enjoy your wrestling. Cheers! Cheers.